Hi there, welcome to No Stress Job Scheduling. My name is Jared Dahl and I'm the manager of the SkyBot software development team. Today we're going to be talking about Enterprise Job Scheduling 101. We're going to kind of cover some of the major subsystems of an Enterprise Job Scheduler. Uh, those subsystems being, uh, you know, your, your Job Scheduler, uh, the Batch Execution Engine, your Event Monitoring uh, Thread, uh, your User Interface, the Queuing Mechanism, and your Records and Storage. Alright, so let's talk about the Scheduler first. The scheduler decides when the jobs are going to run. That's usually user defined. Um, it can be as simple as run this job every 15 minutes or run it at 2 o'clock on Tuesday or it can be as complicated as running a job the third day from the end of the month but not if it's a weekend and if it's a weekend run it on Friday. Okay. Um, the other thing the job scheduler will traditionally handle will be the forecasting of when jobs are going to run in the future and providing that as a view to the user so that they can kind of plan ahead, look for gaps of where to schedule other jobs. The second really important part is the batch execution engine. Now batch kind of comes from the days of uh, mainframes and uh, punch cards and what they would have is several batches of punch card programs that they had to run so batch scheduling was actually physically done by the operator taking those punch cards and loading them into the machine one at a time running them and then getting the output split out. Uh, back, batch ex execution today really means running a software that doesn't require human interaction. So really the first most important thing with batch execution is that the environment gets set up. So that includes things like, you know, if you're looking at like a Linux system, uh, environment variables, the path, um, things, things along those lines, uh, especially really important, the user that's going to be running the uh, those particular commands. The second part, uh, this is also important, is running the commands and then capturing the errors and the output that come out of those commands. Um, that's really one of the reasons for using an enterprise job scheduler because you can run things on remote systems uh, all across your enterprise without having to actually log into those to see that output or see those errors. And then a, another important piece is automated error recovery. An automated error recovery is important from a standpoint of if you have a job that fails in a certain way because uh, maybe a, a tape isn't loaded in a drive or maybe because the network is down, then what you're going to want to do is have it automatically recover and try it again because you know that if it tries it again, it's just going to work. The third thing we're talking about today is event monitoring. Event monitoring is a kind of a newer concept. Um, Basically, you're going to be telling your enterprise job scheduler that you want to watch for a certain condition either on a computer or in the network and when it sees that particular condition, it's going to react to that and do things. So it's uh, kind of what to watch and where to watch for it. Um, recording those events, that's another good historical thing. You want to know if a job gets kicked off, a batch job gets kicked off because of an event, you want to be able to go back and look at the event that actually kicked it off. And then the third piece, of course, is actually you know, processing those events and you know, reacting to whatever was supposed to be done uh, in accordance to that, whether it's running a job or notifying a, uh, uh, an engineer or an IT tech. All right, the fourth thing we're talking about today is the user interface. This is really important, of course, because uh, if you don't have a user interface, you can't work with the software. Big thing you're doing there is you're defining the work to be done by the computer. You're also defining the environment that the work is going to be done in. So like I said earlier, path, environment variables, and, and like what programs are going to be running. Another big task of the, of the user interface is to show you what is currently running. Um, very important. You're occasionally going to check in on this stuff and you're going to want to be able to see what is actually running, how long it's taking. And then the third part is to view the history of what has already ran, how long it took, um, so that can help you out in planning later. All right, a fifth topic is queuing. And there's some uh, controversy as to how this is spelled, but we're going to go with the extra E. Um, so queuing. Uh, there's three big things with queuing. Uh, the first thing is making sure that things run in the correct priority order. Uh, if you have a job that is priority one, you know, like the Ford Motor Company, um, quality is job one. If you uh, have something that's very important, you want that to run in front of other jobs that are less important. Uh, the second thing that you kind of get with queuing is 
uh, a hold on your execution. If you want to stop a queue and prevent all the jobs in it from running uh, because there's a problem with the system, uh, maybe the disk is filling up and you're going to be out of disk space soon, uh, it's nice to have that ability. And the third thing is load balancing. Okay, a, a good queue can help you by limiting the number of things that are going to run on a system and prevent too much from running all at once, which would you know could take the system down by running it out of memory or running it out of disk. All right, the last piece is records and storage. So everything that you're defining, your jobs, your environments, things like that, that all needs to be stored. It needs to stay in storage, not disappear. Uh, it's nice if it can be backed up via a high availability server. Um, another thing that you're going to be storing, uh, all of your events, you want to keep all of that in there, as well as uh, your history for your jobs. Um, and then the last piece is any auditing that you want to perform on the setup. So if you have multiple users kind of coming in and working through the user interface, it's nice to be able to know who made a change and why. All right, so that's it for today. Um, so we talked about the scheduler and batch execution, uh, event monitoring, why that's important. Um, we're going to be talking about some of these other topics as we go along here. We're going to be doing more videos, and I uh, hope you'll join us for them. Uh, that's it. So consider yourself educated. Enterprise Job Scheduling 101. Thank you.